How's everybody doing today? Can you hear me? I'm still adjusting things. This is going to be a messy tutorial, so there may be an intermission in between just so I can uh, walk you through things without knocking too many things over. So today we're actually going to talk about how to upgrade a different board. And I don't know how well it's going to fit, but I think it's going to fit exactly the same as the SKR 1.4. So what I'm going <clears> to <throat> what I'm going to do in a moment is actually take out the SKR 1.4 so you can see how to set the other one up. I just got to focus the camera here a little. Of course, I'm trying to focus on uh, the wrong screen, so give me a second here. So what I'm going to do today is actually pop out this board for the SKR 1.4 and show you how to upgrade a Creality Pro. So if you don't know already, the form factor for these two boards being the SKR 1.4 and the MKS S Gen L are exactly the same. So I'm just popping out this so you can see how it's done. Normally I do this uh, not in front of the camera, so this either might be embarrassing or not so embarrassing. So to insert this board, make sure we get all the screws out. We're going to take it, I'm going to slide it up on these little posts that I put inside this. You can download, download this on Thingiverse, by the way. You're going to loop this underneath. And then you're going to slide it in like so. And then I got to find the holes. So this will be fun to watch me do on camera. This will lead to a bigger setup. It's probably going to be a long night of watching me do this. I'm pretty efficient at it, so I'm guessing it'll take about two hours. It might take less, but I'll probably show you how to calibrate some stuff during the video. See how I'm already clumsy? So I'm sliding this in right here. And I have one more screw to do in the back for the power supply. So this will go into a printer by the end of this time that we're working on it. So hopefully I won't screw up too much. So now that the board is secure, we've got to prep it. And I don't know which steppers you want to do, but I'm planning on doing my favorite, which is the TMC 2208s. 2209s would be a little bit more of a job to do in this printer today. So we need to know our jumpers. And normally I would flip over the board and show you, but we know that the TMC goes on that one right there so we're going to do it for x y 
If I can see without knocking my head into a light, we're going to do Z. Then we're going to do E0 and E1. Those are all the steppers. Now I've covered steppers so many times that I know you, everyone's tired of it, but you have to find the enable pin when you plug these in. So the enable pin is located right here where it says EN. That's gonna go on the upper corner like so. So EN is right here. Then we're gonna do it again. Right here. I'm going to abbreviate a lot of steps in this process. So I'm going to do it right here. And then I'm going to do it right here. And finally, I'm going to do it right here. Now on this board, we have a bunch of different power cables for actually powering our fans. But unfortunately, this one I'm gonna have to reroute. So I might have to actually cut something just so I can reroute it quickly. In the newer designs I'll put up, you can actually see me do this. I'll actually put a hole on the other side to make it simple. But uh, right now, I'm just trying to feed this through without breaking it. So I might have to make the hole a little bit bigger, but uh, for now, let's see if we can get away with stringing it over this way. This is actually the cooling fan for your... Uh, your steppers. I know you're probably seeing most of my arm in this instead of me showing you the plug. But I'm just trying to push this plug down right here so that we can have fan power right here. Seems like a quiet crowd tonight. Maybe I should look in the chat and see what you are saying. Can anyone hear me? Okay, so sorry I took a break there to look at the uh, chat room. I've got it all set up here with the USB. So now I have to insert this in a printer. So I'm actually going to use an Ender 3, and this is where it gets messy because I have to move things around. So if I break something, don't laugh too hard. I actually have to rotate the camera for you too, so you can see what's going on. So I'm gonna move some stuff around real quick. So I'm just cleaning up the desk so uh, I can actually put something in here that I can work with.
Do you have any questions while I'm working on it? I'm trying to set up a uh, spare camera angle so that this doesn't seem too uh, horrible when I do this. So things might be shaking because I'm cleaning off the table as I'm doing it. So what I'm doing right now is actually placing this in the rail to make it easier to work on. So the wires are going to run through it. And hopefully I can get you a better view of the wires. Here's one for power. Here's another for power and it's got a thermistor on the end of it for the connection. That tells me it's for the heat bed in this case. The other one's gonna be power for the actual board. So what I need to do is get these wires organized a little. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna connect the power. There's actually no power going into the board right now, but I'm gonna organize my power so let's see how much of this you can see. So this is the Farrell connection for the power. That's going to go down in here. And this is going to be a little bit rough to do without me being able to see from the angle I'm working. So I can already tell you that one's in the wrong place. It's actually over here. So I'm going to probably do the ground first. Hang on a second here. So here's the power. I'm gonna slide this in for the ground. Now it's not fitting right away, so I've gotta actually create some space. Notice how I marked red and black on the top. Black is always ground. In this case, red is going to be voltage. And the power supply in this case is 24. So that's the first one that's ground. I'm going to tighten it down. Unfortunately, I'm trying to keep my hand out of the way while I do it. Okay, that's nice and tight. Now I'm going to take the actual voltage. Remember, the printer is unplugged when I'm doing this. And I'm gonna slide this into the next spot. 
and tighten it down. Then I'm going to check it by pulling on it. And that's secure. Now here's the wire for the heat bed. This is going to go to the heat bed right here, which is TB. I don't know how well you can see that. Actually, I think you can see what I did. But it's right here. That's for the heat bed. Now I'm going to do the actual bed wiring as well. So hopefully this won't be messy. Well, it's all messy, but first I'm going to start with the voltage. Slide that in and hold it with your finger on one side. Apparently it's not loose in the first place. And tighten it down. That's apparently not tightening, which is not good. So I'm going to see how much I can see by pulling this out. Okay, now that's in. I'm going to tighten that down. Now I'm going to do the same on this one. As you can see, this is not the easiest process when you have it this way and the wires aren't long enough. Apparently that's not right. Okay, those are all set. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start connecting other things. So I'm going to look at the tags on the actual ender. I don't know if you can see that. It says the Y right there. That's the end stop for the Y axis. So they're all going to be labeled that way. So what I'm actually going to start with, because they're the hardest to do yet again, is I'm actually going to do the thermistor for the printer. And I'm going to do the hot end. So these are the hot ends. And this is going to go in HE0, which is hot end 0. So I'm going to release these. And the actual polarity of these doesn't matter for plus or minus or voltage and ground. 
because it's a circular circuit. So I'm going to go first for voltage on this one. And hopefully I can get my finger in here to get it in. Well, let's pick it out and see if I can do it this way. Okay, that one's in. I have to get the other one in. A lot of this is feeling without being able to see. It's almost easier to do outside the board, but I wanted to show you the most painful way to do it. I'm going to move this down and then up again, see if I can get it moving. Okay, I'm going to simplify this. I'm going to pop the board out for a second so we can actually work on it. So what I'm trying to do is actually get into this right here and I can't see from underneath. So now I can see it and it slides right in. I'm going to tighten that down. Next, there's a fan 
And the fan cables, obviously, there's a polarity to them. So there's going to be a black. And there's going to be a red. And this is the fan that's automatically going to go on on my hot end. So I'm going to do it by color. So if you can't see down here, sorry, the light moved. I'm going to do red for the first one, which is right here. I'm going to tighten that down. Then I'm going to do black for this one right here. And this is going to be the fan that automatically will turn on when the hot end gets to, we'll say, 75 degrees Celsius. So we're done with that. Now we want to do the other fan because I want to get that out of the way. So the other fan is the bed cooling fan. And I just have to untangle these wires. It's this one that's on your Ender 3. And we're going to have to check the actual pinouts, but I'm going to connect it right here for now. And then I'm probably going to have to first put this drive back in because it popped out on the ground. And then I'm going to start matching wires. So if I look at this, this says the Y axis for the stepper. We don't need that one just yet. Next, I'm going to look for the other ones. And we have the Z axis. Let me weight these over to the side so that they don't pop up on us. This is the Y end stop. And then we have the X axis. So the X axis we know is the very first one over here. We're gonna pop that in like so. That's the first one. Then we have our E zero, which is right over here. Now we're going to do the other ones that I pushed off to the side for our steppers. So we have our Y axis. to we'll go right over here. Then we have our Z axis right here. So that's all the axi for steppers. Now we've got to start moving these into end stops. So let me untangle some of these wires. Here's the actual thermistor for the hot end. So it's hot end zero. And the way they have this is TH1 and TH2. So it's going to go into here because that's the first one. It's really weird how they numbered it that way. And then we have a second extruder here. So I'm going to plug that in like so to take care of it. Next, I'm going to take my Z axis and plug it in. I believe it's only on ground and signal. You're not going to use the voltage. Then we have our Y axis, which is the same, which is ground and signal. And then we have our X axis, which is ground and signal. So those are the three axes. That's everything hooked up. Um, I'm going to see if I can fire it up without having to put it in the box. So this either might be spectacularly bad idea or a spectacularly good idea. But I also need to take a five minute break to move my car before I get a ticket. So if you want to uh, 
chat among yourselves for a second. I gotta go move my car. Sorry for doing this to you, but unfortunately, uh, I have to worry about getting tickets. So, if everyone's okay with that, I'll be back in five minutes. Uh, keep an eye on my printer for me and uh, chat among yourselves. And hello to Jessica. Hello to uh, everyone else in here. I'll be back in a moment, I promise. I just gotta go take care of this.
Okay, is everybody still here? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do what's known as a uh, smoke test. And it actually is what it is. And what that is is you plug something in. And if you see smoke, you've made a mistake. So what I need to do before I plug it in is actually run the USB to it. This way we can see if anything's wrong. So what I'm probably going to do is put this back in the box just so it's safer. And I can run the cord out to the front. I'm going to clip this wire just to make life easier. So everything but the fan for the cooling of the steppers is in place. So now I'm going to run the USB out to the front of it. And this will power it. And it appears to be okay with that. So now I'm actually going to apply power to it. So I'm going to connect the power cable to the board that is in the power supply. And I'm going to plug in the actual power. So if you see smoke, I've made a huge error. So I'm going to power it up. And there appears to be no smoke. So we're good there. So next I'm actually going to go over to Pronerface. And just see, well, actually, I'm going to go to VS Code and program this. So I'm going to have to open up VS Code real quick in the background. Pardon the play by plays, but this is what I have to do. I'm going to switch over to VS Code in a second. And I'm going to have to prepare VS Code for this. I was talking about a bunch of different things. And a lot of weird things are going to happen with the printer in a minute. So I'm going to have to probably change the way that I have this oriented. So that you can see what's going on. And this may take a moment to actually flip over. So inside VS Code, we're going to check for the motherboard and I think it's set to the MKS so yes it's set to the MKS S Gen L from last night and I also set the first serial port to negative one and it's got a baud rate of 2500 so we're going to actually go to the steppers and see how they're configured. So I'm going to search on A4988. And as you can see, I have a TMC2209 set, but I want to change that to a 2208. I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to change all the other ones to the same. I'm not using a config file because that brings in other issues that I have to deal with. We're going to have several, but we've configured each one of these for a TMC2208. 
And then we're going to have to do steps per millimeter. And I don't actually know what these are going to be. But I know the 4,000 is a little high. So I'm going to do 400. Because I know um, the ender, the defaults are usually 80, 80, 400. And then the E steps may be something like that as well. But we'll figure that out in a minute. So we've got that configured. So now we got to think about like our cooling fan and that's going to be on the advanced configuration so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to the advanced configuration and i'm going to have to search around here but it's uh something about the fan and it's probably the worst thing to search on on the advanced configuration as you can see because we're not interested in a chamber fan we're actually interested in a different type of cooling fan. So there's a bunch of different things in here for it. I haven't covered a lot of them because uh, most people don't want to do the ones that I want to cover. But eventually I will. Okay, so... I think this is close to where we want to be. It says use controller fan. So in this case, we're going to be using a controller fan. But we need to know what pin we're actually going to set. So the controller fan actually might not be the one that we're looking for here. Now that I'm looking at it, this is actually for cooling steppers. We could set that up some other time, but that's another purpose. There's a different cooling fan I'm actually looking for. Let's see, extruder cooling fans. So in this case, E0 and E1, we're going to be doing something with that. But I need to figure out what the settings are because I might be looking at the wrong one. Okay, so it does look like this might be the fan. It has a minimum temperature. We're going to be using E0 and E1 as 1, so it's going to be E0. So I need to look up what the pin is for that, and that's on the MKS S Gen L version 1.0. So I'm going to take you over to the browser, and we're going to figure this out. So in your browser, you're going to probably type MKS S Gen L version 1.0 GitHub. This will take you to the MakerBase GitHub. And then inside here, we've got a bunch of different things. We're going to go to hardware. Then we're going to go to the MKS S Gen L. And we're looking for the one that says pin. And specifically what we're looking for is the pin for HE1, which says P2.6. So that's going to be the pin that we're using. So it's probably going to be P2 underscore 06, because there might be a 16 for P2. So we can confirm that in VS Code, which I'll go back over to so that we can see that. So in VS Code, what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the pins file. So I'm going to go to source, core. I know it's an LPC 1768, I believe. So I'm going to go down to not core, but pins. Find the LPC 1768, open that up, and then see if the MKS SGNL is there, which it is. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to search for P2. And as you can see, there's a 00. zero. That's not what we're looking for. So I'm going to search on the next P2. And that's an X stepper. So what we're looking for is P2 underscore 06, I believe. So let's keep searching. 
There's 08, 11, 13, 12. Here we go. So it's a hot end one. So we can use this as the other fan. So I'm just going to copy this value. Then I'm going to go back over to the actual advanced configuration. And the negative one I'm going to change to that pin. Negative one denotes that it's not in use. Now it is in use. We can set the temperature. So this is 50 degrees Celsius. I'm going to change it to 75 degrees Celsius. And I'm going to change this to 225 for the max fan speed. So the fan is now set up. We also need to set up our steppers. So I'm going to search on 800, try and get to them quickly. And we have a bunch of different steppers. I obviously configured one in the last tutorial for the X axis. Now I'm going to do the Y axis for 750. And this is based off a of root mean square calculation. And this is what I think on mine works best. On yours it may vary. This is the actual increment of step. So I've done X, Y, and Z. I still have to do E0 and E1. So here's E0. And where is E1? I probably scrolled right past it. Right here. Because this printer has two steppers. Now I'm going to go back to configuration.h and I'm going to actually search on thermistor. And this is the setting for our actual heat thermistor. So we have two. So we have one for our hot end because we're only using one. We're not using two. And then down here, we're actually using one heat bed. So we're going to mark that as one. These are actual special thermistors that you can pick from if you buy them. You can set those for your settings. But I'm going to skip that for now because that's a subject within a subject. I'm going to go back up to the top though and search on motherboard because there's a setting that I still need to set. And it has to do with having multiple extruders in one nozzle. So I have a single nozzle on this printer, so I have to find that setting. So it's someplace around here, and it says single nozzle. Now technically the nozzle that we're working with is a mixing nozzle, but I don't want to add more complexity to this tutorial than already is in it. So what I'm going to do is leave it as one single nozzle. But I am going to say that we have two extruders. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find the number of extruders. And this may take a second because I have a funny feeling I'm in the wrong place. There we go. Duh. It's two extruders. So now that we have all the axi and everything configured, I think somewhat this is where it starts to get messy. So I'm going to do an upload to the board for this one just to start. And what's going to occur in this case is just that I'm going to upgrade the firmware. And I'm going to have to power cycle the machine for both powers. So the USB power and the actual direct power in a moment. But I'm going to move the camera while that's operating and check out what you're saying in the actual chat. So let me see where the chat went. Okay, somebody was saying negative E. Does that mean I was out for a minute or? Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually move my camera while this is occurring. So if you hear some crashing, it's me moving around the actual configuration.
Just taking out the other uh, tripod to make this easier to see. I was going to hook up two cameras tonight, but I figured if I did that, it would be difficult to follow. Okay, so I'm going to power down the actual uh, computer and, or excuse me, the printer and the board for a second. And then I'm going to power it back up and I'm going to bring the camera back up so you can see what I'm talking about in a second. Almost configured. Okay. So, let me see how the camera looks before I show you this uh, this mess. But I got to plug the camera back in. Okay, so here's the camera. This is the actual printer. I'm going to power it all back up. I'm going to go into Pronter Face in a second. Let me know if the camera went out. Oh, looks like it's good. And I'm going to show you both at once for the actual printer face. So here goes the transition. If printer face actually shows up at the same time, looks like it is. So I'm gonna connect via printer face and we're gonna test things. Now this might get messy real quick, uh, judging by where all the wires are in the way, but it looks like it can move fine. So I'm going to connect to the printer. And the first thing I'm going to do is just home the x-axis just to make sure everything's okay. If it starts to go the wrong way, I'm going to power off the printer. So I'm going to home. And it's going the wrong way, so I'm powering it off. That's mistake number one. So I'm going to disconnect and reconnect. I'm going to power it back on because I don't want you to hear the grinding noise. Now I'm going to do the same thing where I connect for the Y axis. So I might have to power cycle a couple of things here to get it to work. So I'm going to power off, disconnect the printer from USB, reconnect the USB, power back on the printer, and connect again. And that'll bring back the printer for me. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and home the Y axis. I'm going to put it in the center just because I don't want it to home quickly. And I might keep my hand on the power again just in case because it might go the wrong direction. 
So I'm gonna home now. So it looks like it worked right, but ground at the end. So I'm gonna move it forward. And I'm gonna home again, just in case there was some kind of misalignment. And home it again. So it is homing, but uh, something seems slightly off with it. It might be that there's something in the way of it. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Now I'm going to try the Z-axis and see what happens. And the Z-axis appears to be going up, as you can see. So that tells me it's going the wrong direction. So what we need to do is actually go back into the firmware and make some changes. So I'm going to move the x-axis over to the center again for a second so that we can prepare it. But let's go back over to VS Code. Yeah, that is the Big Tree Tech 2-in-1 hot end. It's a lot of fun to work with. It actually works really well. Just remember to lubricate the hot end with a drop of canola oil on each of your filaments when you put it in and always feed forward through it don't feed where it will you have to pull filament out that you never want to do and make sure that your actual uh, PTFE is pushed all the way down So let's see what we got here. In VS Code, we're going to go to configuration.h. And the problem that we're running into is we're going the wrong direction for our end stop. So we're going to search on end stop. And this might take a couple of iterations. I don't know if I'm going to get it right the first time. But I'm going to scroll down, and we know that x went the wrong way. So we're going to say. Not that we're inverting the logic of the end stops. We actually didn't check that. But we know that the actual direction is wrong. So if we can find the direction, let's see if I can see if we can search on direction. So here it is. So there's a couple of different directions. It says inverting x dir. Right now it's set to false. We're gonna change it to true because it went the wrong way. The y-axis went the right way, and the z-axis appeared to go up instead of down. So we're gonna change that to true for the moment. There may be something else going on, but that's what it seems like as an issue. And all we're gonna do is recompile again and this time when we go to actually center each one of the axi what we're going to do is we're going to center the axi on the actual bed the x and leave the z where it is does anybody have any questions while this is compiling and i'm grabbing a chai here to drink Yeah, for the uh, Big Tree Tech 2-in-1 mixing hot end, those parts, that's the mount that I'm using. Just remember to keep an eye on it because if your temperature goes crazy, it'll melt through the mount. Maybe one of these days I'll have time to actually take the design and make it out of metal. But uh, right now I don't have any metal working equipment that's uh, big enough to work with. Meaning I can't cut thick metal with uh, the tools I have. Let me see if I can find the Thingiverse link for you while this is going on.
So I'm on Thingiverse right now. I'll bring it up in a second in the chat where it is actually located. But obviously my computer moves very slow when I'm streaming, so. So Thingiverse is slowly loading for me. And I'm searching on eBrayman for Thingiverse. I think that's what all my designs are under. Granted, the printer I was going to show you for a design kind of looks like this one, but um, I designed it in 2017. So it's not an Ender. I call it a easy multifunctional Prusa. But here's the design. Let me grab the uh, link to it. So I'm putting it in the chat for you to see. Those are the parts being the uh, holder and also the uh, extruder holder for the uh, hot end. So now that the actual compile I think is complete, well, it's almost complete. It's finishing this second. What I'm going to do is I'm going to power it down for USB and then power it back up. And then I'm going to go back over to Pronterface to test this. So let me get that up. Okay, so I'm back in Pronterface. I'm going to power on the machine. I'm going to connect again. And I'm going to first check my end stops by typing M119 and seeing if the logic is reversed on any of them. It looks like two are open, meaning that there's nothing at the end of the axis. And then the Z axis says that it's triggered. So there's something logically wrong with the z-axis, which we'll correct in a minute. But at least now we know why it's acting funny. So I'm going to try and home the x-axis first and see what happens. And I'm going to keep my hand on the power supply like before. So it's going the wrong way. So that's horrible. So I've done something wrong there. So I'm going to disconnect. Hopefully reconnect. Well, I'm going to have to power both down. I'm going to move that back over to the center. And I'm going to reconnect again. This time I'm just going to move the x-axis 10 and see which way it goes. So it seems to be going the opposite direction that we want it to go or homing. So let's try the Z axis and see if that's fixed. That's going the wrong way, but we know that the actual logic is backwards for the end stop. And then the Y axis we'll try again. Hopefully it won't grind too much. And that seems fine. So we have to go back into the firmware and do this again. So I'm going to transition back. And I'm going to figure out what's going on with this. Sorry, what is it about the, at the beginning of the chat, Jessica? I'm not understanding. Is it I made a... I'm not seeing the whole chat or everyone else is not seeing the whole chat? But while that's going on, I'm just going to go back in here and see what's going on with the invert direction. So the stepper direction seems to be okay. So 
So I'm going to look around here and see if there's something else. It says invert stepper pins. So maybe I'll mess with this and see what happens. So inverting the stepper enable pin from active low to active high. So I'm going to change the X. And I'm not exactly sure what's going to happen. But I'm also going to change the actual end stops that were up above. So I have to go and find the Z end stop. So I'm going to search on end stop. And down here, we can see that the Z minimum is set to true. We want to set that to false for inverting. That will at least align our end stops. Then I'm going to re-upload yet again. I know this is extremely boring to do this stepwise. Actually, I, but I have to. This is how you figure out which steps might be broken. And some of it is guessing or just exploring and making mistakes. So as soon as this finishes compiling, we'll reload it again. I'll power down the printer to start right now. And notice how I haven't tested anything having to do with the actual extruders or a heat bed. I usually save those for last because lots of bad things can possibly happen. So I want to see if everything else works before I get to that. I'm not saying anything bad's going to happen, but on occasion I've had bad things happen. I won't tell anybody about the little sun that I accidentally created at home. Oh, I'm going up to the top of the chat to read through it while it's compiling here. So give me a second. I'm doing well, Jessica. How are you? Uh, yeah, it snowed a little in the morning. Um, we have a big lake right above us, like five, six miles away. I think it's the biggest freshwater lake in the world. So what happens is when big snowstorms hit, if the wind isn't blowing a certain way, we don't get any snow. So it's kind of like an insulator above us. That's what we call lake effect. But on occasion, we get 14, 15 feet, depending upon how the wind is blowing. But today it was two inches or one inch, sorry, which is 2.5. 2.45 millimeters, I think. I'm sorry, centimeters. I'll wake up in a minute. We think in inches still here, unfortunately, so I default to that when I start talking. Oh, it's 1230 in Germany? Yeah. 2.54 centimeters, which is one inch. But that was maybe the day before, but we usually, I think you you would call it negative two or three degrees Celsius right now, which is not cold for us. We've gotten down to uh, where hot water will freeze when you throw it in the air. That's happened like the last couple of years. So it's finished compiling, so I'm going to power cycle again. 
bring it back up. I'm going to power up the printer and then bring it back into printer face. So hopefully we've resolved some kind of problem here. So I'm going to disconnect in printer face, reconnect in printer face. It says that it's back online. I'm going to check the end steps. They all say open, so at least we have one successful thing to happen. Now I'm going to try and home the, or I'm going to move the x-axis, just 10. Currently the x-axis doesn't want to move that way, or that way. So I'm going to try and uh, home the y-axis. So the y-axis homed. So I'm going to try and home the x-axis and I'm going to keep my hand on the power again. And apparently I've created something wrong with the x-axis, which has caused the printer to die. So I'm going to power cycle everything. So I'm taking the USB offline, bringing it back online, bringing the x-axis back online, or excuse me, the power for the printer back online. And I'm going to disconnect and reconnect. I'm going to try and home the x-axis again with my hand on the power. And it looks like something's wrong with the x-axis. So I'm going to turn everything off again. I'm going to power it back on for USB. I'm going to disconnect, reconnect. This time I'm just going to do the z-axis and see what happens. It seems to be going up. So it thinks homing is in the opposite direction. So I'm going to power it off. Now I'm going to go back to... VS Code and see if I can fix these problems. First, I got to disconnect. So I'm going to go into VS Code. I know this takes forever, but uh, unfortunately, this process is kind of weird. And I'm going to find direction because I know that's where one of the changes was. So I inverted the direction for the x-axis earlier but I also did something funky up here with enable this as on so I'm turning that back off so what I need to do is try and change the direction for the z-axis and see what happens so I'm gonna say false and I'm gonna try false for x again I know that might be useless, um, but it does say that it reverses the motor if the axis is going the wrong way. So then we're going to re-upload again. You guys want to know a funny story about me. Um, in high school, my teacher was a uh, German-speaking English or math teacher. And she loved having the student exchange for uh, Germany. And the student exchange was called the Brighton, well, she said it Brighton Bremen exchange. Not knowing that my name in English is pronounced Bremen. So after about the 10th time in class this happened, where the first 15 minutes we talk about the exchange, I raised my hand and asked to talk about math. And uh, she got upset and told me to wait until she was done, which obviously I had to do. The humorous thing is I never told her that the actual pronunci pronunciation of Bremen is Bremen. Granted, I don't sprechen Sie Deutsch very well, so... Um, that would be my mother. Well, it's getting late, I know. I'll see if I can speed things up. Um, obviously I gotta make a couple mistakes to show you what's going on. Yeah, five centimeters isn't that much snow to us. That's just a dusting, usually. So, 
inside VS Code, it's almost done compiling, hopefully. If I had my other computer, this probably would be significantly faster, but uh, the price of the uh, new AMDs just went through the roof, so I have to reconsider building another machine. But on my other machine, this takes between 30 seconds and a minute, so it gives me time to babble. So who else is retrofitting a printer? Yeah, the whole, this is more of an iterative, iterative process to figure out what's a matter with the printer. Um, you could use the default file, but then other problems arise that they have in their file. We haven't even gotten to the actual tuning of the printer. That could take a lot more effort. So now that this is almost compiled and uploaded, I have to check. It says uploading. I just don't want to find out that the USB is disconnected here. Might be that I'm connected over here. No. So I'm going to check the actual drive on the actual printer. And currently it says I've got nothing. That's awesome. Never seen that before. So apparently some kind of issue arose where my drive stop functioning for the SD card and it's showing that the SD card has no software on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power cycle my USB get the error that comes with it power it back on I can see the drive again. I'm going to hit upload again, but I can also do this. I can go to the .pio, <coughs> excuse me, go to the build folder, LPC 1768. You're not going to be able to see this part because I think the uh, browser fil filters it out, but I'm going to right click and go to reveal and explore. I'm going to go into the LPC folder. I'm going to see if the actual bin file is there for firmware.bin. Currently, I don't see it. Well, I do see it. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to send it to the drive directly. Then I'm going to go verify it's on the drive. I know you can't see this part. It says that it's there right now. So I'm going to power cycle the actual drive for the USB to the MKS S Gen L and bring it back up and see if it loads. So it should come up firmware.cur. And it has the wrong time from 10 minutes ago. So I'm gonna try yet again. If it doesn't work this time, then I'll just re-upload via the software. A lot of weird things can happen when I'm doing this. One of which is uh, the computer may be slowing down due to the stream. So I'm just going to copy the file this time and go over to the drive. And apparently it still says it's got firmware.bin on it, which is really weird to me. But let's see if I can jump out of here. There it is. I'm going to paste it. Now it's got both on it. I'm gonna power cycle it. I know you can't see this part, but I'm just copying manually the file over. And I wanna look for a time of something like 6.40 for the compile time. And that tells me it loads. So it did load. So that's one way around the problem of not having to hit upload again, cause it's already in existence in your .pio folder. So, now I'm going to power the printer back up and trans 
transit back to the configuration for Kroner face. So I'm transitioning over. Now that you can see it, hopefully the camera's on. Let me check it. Camera appears to be working. It may go out because it usually times out on me. So I'm going to try this again. I'm going to connect to the printer. I'm going to home the X axis and keep my hand on the power on the side. It's going the wrong way. So I'm going to power cycle, power cycle it back on, turn the power back on, move it to the center. I'm going to move the Y axis out a little, but that's okay. I'm going to see if I can home the Z axis now. So I'm going to hit home and see what happens. As soon as I reconnect to the printer, that is. So now I'm going to home. And now it looks like the Z axis is actually homing. Now that's going to take forever, which is okay. As we want to actually see if the end stop works, we know that it's set to open right now. Now the possible issues with the x-axis could be that the NEMA stepper cord could be disconnected or something else or it's a firmware issue. So we'll try one more thing in firmware and then we'll check the actual hardware. So I'm going to test how far the y-axis or excuse me the z-axis goes up 10 to see if it's okay. So as you can see, it moves approximately 10. But if you haven't noticed, on the far left-hand side of the printer, there's little gold marks. That's one of my cheat sheet things that I do to actually check the steps. So as you can see right now, it's aligned with one of those gold steps on the far left side here. That's what I use to actually control the actual tuning of it. So I'll measure between, let me bring that back up. I'll measure between the actual movements by going up by 10, and that'll tell me how close I am. I know I'm relatively close, so I'm not worried about it. It's the same process for, excuse me, the actual extruders up here. I usually disconnect them and then I'll run filament through. Let me uh, bring the camera angle up a little so you can see what I'm talking about. So at the very top of the printer, I'll disconnect this when I'm initially working with it and feed in the filament above without this cord here so I can measure the actual distance it travels. And that's how I use it to tune it. Yes, I'm st still connected to printer face. But uh, let's check the Y axis before I go back in and try and figure out what's going on with the Z axis. So I know the Z axis and the Y axis are functioning correctly now. So I'm not worried about them. I am worried about the x-axis and me doing something wrong. So I'm going to power down the system. And I'm going to check that x down here is actually in. So it's down in here. And I'm pretty sure it's in place. We know the x is moving. So the question is, why is it moving the wrong direction? I can't flip the cord for this because it's not a DuPont connector. So I'm going to have to go back over to BS Code yet again. And inside BS Code, we already know that inverting didn't work. We know that actually disabling 
the steppers or changing the uh, steppers actually we could try changing this again but it's not going to do anything for us it should have inverted so I'm going to try setting it to one again I know that's probably not going to help but I'm going to also look and see if there's an invert someplace else. So invert the stepper direction, change or reverse the motor connector if the axis goes the wrong way. So it's telling me to do this. So I'm going to do true and see what happens. And I'm actually not going to do this at the moment. That'll be the next step just to see if it works again. And I'm going to try and upload again after I power back up the USB. So I'm going to upload again. All this is is just trying to figure out what's a matter with the machine step by step. It's a lot of steps, unfortunately. Let me fix this filament over here. Sorry, I'm just reading the chat here to see what people are helping me with. Invert XDIR, set it to true. So let's go back and look at that. Invert X. Okay, we did that. Yeah, I'll try that next for uh, the invert direction to negative one. Apparently, I get a little nervous when I'm on camera and don't always read that well. Let me just read around here and see what they have. Oh, duh. This is what you're talking about. I'll wake up in a minute. So the X Homder is actually what she was just trying to tell me was change it to one. The other ones seem to be okay. Okay, now I understand your message. So now that we have that, I'm gonna have to cancel this compile. So let me see if I can figure out how to kill it easily before I have to hit recompile. Is there right click to stop? Oh, garbage. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to hit upload again with that one change because Jessica, Jessica pointed out the actual issue. And now I've got away from my browser to figure out what I'm talking about. Press any key to close it. Lovely. Let me try a reclean. I'm going to try a reopen. Hopefully, this doesn't mess up what you're seeing. Oh, it's coming up fine. Okay. Let's try this again when I get the actual compile button. So I'm going to do a new upload.
And apparently I caused myself some issues. So I'm going to take the USB offline for a second, bring it back up. Then I'm going to try a clean. This should clean out everything that was in that folder. And then I'm going to try and upload again, which is build and recompile. Hopefully it won't fail twice. And it's failing twice. So there could be something else going on that I've caused an issue with. But it looks like it's an issue with the actual error here. So I'm going to have to click on this actual error and see what the sanity check is. It says enable max plug when homing. So I think what I did is I forgot to change something back when I made a change. So let's see. I'm going to search in here for this error. I'm not using max plug, so I don't know why that's occurring. So I'm going to ignore that for the moment. I may have fat fingered something, meaning I set something else up. But let me read through this real quick and see if I can find the actual error. So I changed that back. I'm wondering if that's something that I changed earlier or if this was it. So I'm going to cheat and do control Z. Well, I can't do control Z. So I'm guessing it's possibly this error right here. I'm going to change that to false for a second. And I'm going to try and upload again. And if it fails again, we may have to reload the firmware just because it's easier to find your mistake when you trip over it twice, I guess. Enable use max. We try. Okay, actually, I think I know another possible issue. No, nope, that's fine. Serial dot H. No, oh, that should be fine. I'm just jumping around looking at, for possible issues. I think I know what the issue is. So I'm going to actually close down the actual compile for a second. So I'm going to close out of this for a second and transition you over to this so I can take care of that. And then I'm going to Power off the USB for a second, then bring VS Code back up and hopefully not have an issue. Otherwise, there are a couple other things I can do. I'm actually going to give it a second to load. I'll bring you back over to what I'm doing.
as soon as I bring you over to what I'm doing. Apparently VS Code's not appearing yet. That's awesome. So I think there's a bug in OBS where I can't bring up this uh, program right now, or it's running in the background and I have to kill it twice, which I have a feeling is what's going on. So let me check the task manager real quick. See more details. I'm looking for things that are consuming a lot of resources. Obviously, OBS is. But I don't see anything else that's uh Eating up processor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try one last time and then we'll probably have to continue this tomorrow just because we've been trying to do this for two hours and I think the computer is telling me it needs a rest but we can continue from there if that's the issue or I can try and build in the background, you won't be able to see it. But now it's giving me two instances of VS Code. That's awesome. Okay. So I got VS Code back up. Apparently you have to wait a while. I'm going to do a clean. And then I'm going to hope it actually builds. Otherwise, i got to figure out what the issue is. Yeah, I think it's something I set recently, so I'm going to change that setting back that we just changed recently. I know it's not the optimal thing to do, but I'm going to change this to 1 or negative 1 and just see if that's a compile issue. So I'm going to do another upload. And it looks like something I'm doing here, which is logically correct, is not working logically correct. So it's triggering one of the sanity checks. So for some reason, I've got to figure out what's going on with that. And I think it has to do with what I'm setting up above with these so that's super odd but that's what's causing the issue it was the last modification that I made uh, Frank I can eventually do a power loss recovery uh, one of the things about the power loss recovery is that I'm terrified that I might show somebody the wrong way to do it and they might injure themselves. So I try and avoid showing things with lots of power. But I can look into that and see if I can figure out a safe way to do it. Um, some of the tutorials that I did years and years ago with capacitive sensors, um, the, when no one was actually watching my tutorials, I had a video up there on how to do a capacitive sensor and the the wires started melting. So that's why I try and avoid doing things with lots of power. But let's see if I uh, can find a way around this problem. Apparently Jessica's advice is valid, but there's something wrong with the actual sanity check in Marlin because this should work correctly so I'm gonna say one again 
I'm going to clean this out. And then there's something dependent on it up above that's causing this issue. And I'm also going to clear out the actual build that was sent over to the SD card. So I'm just going to delete that from the SD card. If it allows me to do it. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to power cycle and let it load. But it allowed me to do it. So home dir. I have to understand what's going on. There's something up here that needs to be set. And it's going to show me when it runs a sanity check. This is where it's checking to see the values are correct. So that's where it's breaking. It's the very first error. So I have to scroll up here. And it's probably something to do with this. And it's saying your HAL path being your hardware abstraction layer and your path. So this might have to do with my actual connection or something else. But it's in the sanity check. So I'm going to go through a couple of different things here and see if I can find the actual error. So it's saying enable use max plug when homing x max. We're not homing x max. We're actually going to the min. So something's inverted where it thinks it's going the wrong way. So the actual problem is probably around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to see if we can cheat. So I'm going to go back here. I'm going to undo that change that I thought I had up here. I'm going to search on that value in this file. And unfortunately we're using xmin. So I don't know why xmax is enabled. But we're going to just try this. This probably is going to fail miserably. But let's give it a try and see if it actually builds. This might be something new in Marlin I don't know about. It may realign the pins in the pins file the way they have their uh, pins.h file set up, which I think is what's going on. But I'm seeing it from the .h file thought process. This is actually your configuration for your file, and this is how the pins are aligned. So the pins that we're thinking of are these, and they're talking about the end stops. And they're doing something funky in here where they're making it point the opposite direction. So these are your steppers and the pins they use. End stops are probably here someplace. Limiting switches. So apparently there's it thinks I'm using a different set of pins. So this may not work at all. Um, I can always swap to a different set of pins because the other ones are directly behind it or the Z axis. But uh, we'll see what happens. This might be uh, a horrible mistake. Or it might be a mistake in the sanity check for Marlin. But it says something about home dir. So this is probably where my actual issue is. Which means that I said something earlier that's not right. So I'm going to actually undo this change in a second. I don't know how that got to that, but okay. So I'm going to comment this out and see if I can find the issue. Because I actually just enabled the wrong actual axis, which you're probably laughing because uh, I didn't think of that. So there's home dir. So home dir and use max plug.
that's for the x-axis it's actually the error is down here I think unless I change something else so I'm going to go back here and see if I can figure out this issue so home dir is tied to the x home dir for sanity check So when it's less than zero and min. So that's really weird because they give you two options of negative one or one. So there is a simple fix for this, but I don't like the one I'm going to use for it. And that is clip off the connector and turn it around. But I think there's something going on with the invert. So I'm going to first try and do a quick compile. This is going to be boring for a while. And then I'm going to start changing one setting at a time and hitting compile. But does anybody have any questions while I'm doing that? Maybe you already have the answer. Looks like a bunch of people have been talking already. Well, home dir may mean also that it's supposed to go the other way. Meaning it's an easy way not to flip the plug. So my guess is it's something tied to the X inverter. So let's go back and see if the X inverter actually helps. I'm going to change this to true. And try it again. So wow, this is an interesting issue. Let's go back and see what it says here. Penalty check, doesn't matter. The next stage in it. Pointing to the actual Marlin config.h. Next place that it is. Talking about serial.h. Serial.h is usually the communication over the serial port, which, unless I change that by accident. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, it's saying something about dir. So it really wants me to go with the max. That's easy enough to do. So I think that's our way around the problem for now. So I'm going to go down here, or I'm going to go back to the end stops and change that. So I'm going to enable the X max. Hmm, what's this? Uh, we'll look at that some other time. Go back up here and search on it. So I'm just going to bring this back online. I comment this out. And I'm going to upload to the printer. And hopefully uh, the sanity check won't be a insanity kind of thing for the next couple hours. Yeah, to the 
you, Jessica, what you're saying is you can invert the logic of when you're doing an M119. Um, this is X minimum N stop inverting. Let me search on it real quick, see what we get. So this may change the direction, but let's upload this first one, try it, and then we'll go back, disable the other thing and see if we can do it this way as well. Normally at this point, I just reverse the DuPont connector, but it's not a DuPont connector in this case. Okay, I'm going to test this real quick. I'm just going to test the x-axis and then we'll go back in and make the change and see if it works the other way. So I'm going to connect. I'm going to do M119 to see where I am. Does the x minimum is triggered right now? That's another issue. So that's interesting. Now let's see if we can actually home and see what happens. So I'm going to put my arm on the actual power again for the power switch and I'm going to click home. So that's kind of like a move in the right direction. But the reason it keeps stopping might be because the logic of the X max says triggered. So maybe we've got two ways to approach this. So I'm going to disconnect. I'm going to power off the printer. I know you didn't see what I just did because I forgot to transition, but I'll show you again. Sorry about that. Go over to the printer face. Sorry. I'm going to transition. I'll show you what happened. So I'm going to power this back on. I'm going to connect to the printer. I'm going to turn the camera back on. I'm going to type M119. You can see the X max says triggered. So I'm going to try and home the access. Let me make sure that you can see what I'm seeing. Uh, it's at the very bottom of the image. So I'm going to click home. And see it tries to move, but it thinks that it's already hit the triggered end stop so i'm going to trigger this with my arm and i'm going to do an m119 to see what happens and then i'm going to try and home again and you'll see what happens it still doesn't seem to want to work so there's something going on with the logic and the logic is actually that it's not triggered what's occurring is i'm connected to the x minimum so I'm going to power that down, power that down, reach into the board, disconnect my X minimum, and then connect it to my X maximum. Then I'm going to move this back to the center. I'm going to power up the printer. I'm going to reconnect my USB. I'm going to hit disconnect, reconnect. I'm going to do an M119 to see what the status is. Now it says it's open. Now I'm going to click home. And it's going the wrong way. So apparently reversing the direction didn't work out very well at this moment. Now Jessica has another suggestion to try. So she's saying X min end stop inverting equals false. So let's try that.
So inverting in this case, set to true to invert the logic. So right here, the only thing about that is the logic that we saw for the end stop now says open because we're connected to the right one. So what we would actually end up doing would be changing it to triggered. So what we can try is to reverse the direction back. Now we might get a different error. So I'm going to try that first. And that was down here. I search on invert. Let me just read through what's going on. So invert stepper direction. We could do that one or we could do the other one down here for the home door. So let's try this one first. And see what happens. So the power's off, so I'm going to hit upload. Hopefully I'm on the right thing for you to see, which I'm not. Sorry. Right. right over here in the center that I changed. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of where you are when you're uh, streaming. Yeah, I don't think it's the actual stepper. I mean, it could be the stepper. But the actual movement of the actual motor along the axis tells me that it's possibly not the motor. There's something in Marlin that's not configured right. So what I was talking about in Marlin changing was I just changed this for the moment. And I want to see if that actually helps correct the problem. Currently, I'm getting strange YouTube notifications about something happening in my country. Something I really don't care for right now. But my phone doesn't work while I'm streaming, so... Oh well. So I think what I'll do is after we get this working or if we don't get this working after this try, we'll probably have to do this tomorrow afternoon at like three o'clock Eastern Standard Time because we're rapidly approaching uh, almost eight o'clock and I'm getting really cotton mouth so we'll see what happens if this works then I'll just do the remainder of the tuning tomorrow with you at three o'clock when I'm more fresh meaning awake but let's see what happens with this and then uh, We'll call it a night because I know it's real late over there. So, apparently the firmware is having fun trying to 
copy over to the board. This looks like the issue we had before. So let me see if it's actually copied over. Apparently it doesn't show anything copied over. So let me power off the board, power it back on. I'm going to go to the folder where it's stored and just copy it over. So up here, like I did before with .pio, I'm going to open Reveal and Explorer. This part you won't be able to see, but I'm going to go to the Build folder, the LPC1768 folder. There's a firmware.bim that just finished compiling at 7.23 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to go over <clears throat> excuse me, to my SD drive. And I'm going to paste it in there manually just to get around the problem. I don't know if there's an error in VS Code or if something's wrong with my Python script. So now I'm going to power cycle and let it load that way. So I'm checking to wait to see if it comes back up first. It looks like it just loaded, so I'm going to switch camera angles back to the printer and printer face. I'm going to power up the printer. I'm going to move the camera angle down so you can see better. And I'm going to try and home after I connect the x-axis and I'm going to keep my hand on the actual power button. So here we go. So apparently we fixed that. So I think that's a good point to take a break so that one, you can get a good night's sleep and two, I can take a break and get something to drink to clear my throat. So everyone be safe, have a nice night, and I hope it's not storing worse than it is here. Take care.